Today, I'm going to be sharing how much I pay for utilities each month living in Tokyo. I used to live by myself before moving in with my then girlfriend and now wife into a different apartment. So I'm going to be taking a look at both situations as well as the cost through different times of the year because they kind of vary according to the season. I've also taken a look at how much rent costs for a single person living in Tokyo and how much meals may cost on average. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them in the description below. If you're coming here for the first time, my name is Barrett. I'm originally from the US and I currently live in Tokyo. My videos are basically about me straddling the US and Japan, um, what I do and the places that I go. So if that is of interest to you, hit that subscribe button. So before I get into things, I just want to state that the overall cost of living will vary quite a bit depending on your lifestyle. So as I talk about the different utilities, I'm going to be talking about my personal situations and choices that I have made or make just to be a little bit more clear and provide a little bit more context for you. So the first utility I'm going to be looking at is gas. So gas affects your water heater and your stove mainly. So in Japan, the fudo or taking baths after you take a shower is very common. Almost every Japanese person does it every evening. When I lived by myself, I almost never did it. I used the fudo maybe like once, maybe twice. Um, part of the reason was just because it was too small. And then um, another one was it didn't have that function that keeps the water warm or reheats the water. So I just never really use it. But even now, um, my wife is Japanese, but we hardly ever use the fudo. I maybe not even once a month in the wintertime a little bit more because it's cold and it feels good. But overall, we are a shower household. And when it comes to the stove, uh, which is also gas, when I lived alone, I used to cook every single day, pretty much, especially on the weekdays. But I would cook simple foods. So just fry some meat and vegetables and maybe was using the stove maybe like 15 to 20 minutes a day or so. But now living with my wife, she likes to cook and have proper meals, thankfully. So usually we'll have like a main dish and a side and soup. Um, so she's just using the stove a lot more. So I got some notes uh, with my bills. In February, when I was living alone, my bill was 2,646 yen. In May, 1,965 yen. In August, 1,442 yen. November, 1,982 yen. So the average was about 2,009 yen per month or about $17.66 US. In my current one bedroom with my wife, um, the bill was 5,675 yen in February. In May, 5,929 yen. In August, 2,992 yen. In November, 4,621 yen. So the average was about 4,804 yen or about $42.23 US. So a little more than double, but like I said, my wife likes to cook and she's good at it. So no complaints there. If you like to cook and try out Japanese foods, and use a lot of different Japanese ingredients, I wanna introduce Kokoro Care Packages. So Kokoro Care Packages offers collections and subscriptions of different food items and ingredients from all over Japan. You might go to your market where you are and there's like an Asian section, right? Like it's just all one thing. Or maybe you're lucky enough to have a Marukai or Nijia or Uwajimaya, um, but if you've traveled around Japan or if you've lived in Japan, you might want to try more authentic local ingredients like the stuff that you had when you were in Japan. I know for me, being here for so long, I would struggle without having those options. And that's what Kokoro Cares does. And they will tell you the story about who they are, where they're from, and how it all came to be. So it's really cool. Now, I was lucky for them to reach out to me and send me a box. So let's look at what I got. Shipped directly to my door, which is really convenient. And they ship to a lot of countries all around the world. So they probably do ship to you. Comes like this. They have all of these recipes. 
using the ingredients that are in the box. And so this is really neat. You're taking a look at where everything came from and gives you a story about all of the items and who produces them. Yeah, so really cool. They really dive into the story of where these ingredients come from. And they're like nicely packed too, look at this. So super awesome, thank you for sending this to me. If you are interested in getting a subscription box for yourself, you can use Baradish 10 for 10% off your first subscription box purchase. We're gonna be using some of this a little bit later on to make some food. So if you're like, I don't care how much your water bill is Barrett, you can go and skip on ahead to see that. Otherwise, let's talk about water. So the water bill comes once every three months and it's for that three month period. Um, I don't use a whole lot of water, I don't think. I take one shower in the evening and maybe in the summer, sometimes I'll take two showers, one in the day as well, because it's just so gross here in the summer. You get all sticky and sweaty, but no fudos, um, no anything like that. Just basic showers, like 10 minutes max, pretty quick. So there was pretty much no fluctuation in my bills when I lived alone. Um, so I'm not going to go through each month. Um, my average water bill when I lived by myself in my studio apartment was 3,717 yen or about $32.63. So again, that's for three months. In my current apartment, it's the same three month periods, but it fluctuates a little bit more for some reason. In the winter, it was 6,254 yen. It was 7,825 yen in the spring. 7,040 yen in the summer and 6,778 yen in the fall. So the average was about 6,974 yen or about $61.22 US. Okay, so next is electricity. That's a big one. You got your lights and your heater and your AC. Now the 1K studio that I was living in by myself was a 1K, so it was one room and a kitchen and it was 24 square meters or about 258 square feet. It had one AC heater unit. The apartment that I'm living in now is a one LDK. So it's a one bedroom with a living area, dining area and kitchen. It's a little over 47 square meters or 506 square feet. And it has two AC and heater units, one in the living room and one in the bedroom. Now the type of building is one of the factors that can affect your electricity costs a little bit. There are two general types of buildings in Japan. One is apato and one is manshon. It's from apartment and mansion, which is weird because they're both not mansions. Um, I know, just stick with me. So apatos tend to be smaller buildings. They're a little bit more simpler. So they will often have less insulation for things like cold or for noise, but they also cost you less. But because they have less insulation, you might be using your heater more in the winter. Mansions, on the other hand, are a little bit mid-sized to large-sized buildings. They use more concrete, tend to have more insulation for heat and noise, but they cost more. And for context, both of the apartments that I've lived in in Tokyo are the mansion type. As far as lifestyle goes, um, all of our lights are either fluorescent for the ceiling lights and the rest are LEDs, both in this apartment and my last apartment. We turn off the lights when we're not in the room and we're not doing anything like mining crypto or anything like that. So pretty basic, but again, my wife likes to cook. So we probably use the microwave slash oven a little bit more as well as the toaster oven. But other than that, nothing too extreme. So when I lived alone, my electric bill was 5,644 yen in February, in May, 2,696 yen, in August, 4,170 yen, and in November, 2,471 yen. So the average was about 3,745 yen or $32.59. In my one bedroom with my wife, my bill was 6,264 yen in February, 4,820 yen in May. In August, it was 7,747 yen. November, 3,473 yen. So the average was about 
5,576 yen or $48.52. So you can see that there's quite a fluctuation depending on the season. So that's why I wanted to break this down for you. Last but not least, internet and phone. So for me now, it became just one bill, but it started off two separate bills initially. Um, for internet, it's weird because you have to pay for the, per the service itself and then the provider. I don't really get it fully, but one is to NTT and then the other one was to my service provider, which was OCN. But having two bills like that that I have to take care of is just kind of a pain in the butt. So a uh, SoftBank, which is my mobile phone provider, uh, sold me on having a SoftBank internet package combined with my phone service so I could just have everything in one place. So every month is just deducted as one bill from my bank account. So my internet is 4,734 yen a month or about $41.24 US. It's SoftBank Kikari and it's a fiber optic connection. The cost is the same now as it was when I was living by myself in my studio. Um, it's using the Manshon type of connection. So there's like two different internet connections. One is for Manshons or like buildings and then the other is for uh, single homes. So mine is the mansion type. My phone bill, also a SoftBank using an iPhone, is 7,570 yen a month or about $66 US. This includes 20 gigabytes of data per month, um, but I have to pay each time that I make a phone call. For some reason, phone calls are expensive in Japan. Um, it's not like the U.S. because I think in the U.S. it was like opposite, right? Like back in the day, they would give you all these minutes, but then for a texting plan, you would have to pay an extra fee on that. But it's, I guess, the opposite in Japan. And that is why services like Line are really popular. I also need to add that I am not paying monthly um, for the phone device itself. Uh, my current phone, I did buy from Apple directly. So adding all of this up, my average cost per month for utilities when I lived alone in my 1K studio was 14,205 yen before the phone bill, which was about $123.76 US. In my current apartment, besides the phone bill, um, it's 22,088 yen or just about $192.44. So what do you think? Is that cheap? like a good deal or is that really expensive? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll put some links in the description for you. Um, and thank you again to Kokoro Cares for sending me this great package. Um, again, if you want to get yourself a subscription, I use the code BARITISH10 at checkout for 10% off your first subscription purchase. But now it's time to go and make some food. So my wife was able to create a full Japanese meal using everything in the Kokoro Care packages Creative Beginnings Redefining Wall Box. First, the daikon is prepared by cutting it into pieces and then taking off the skin. Then it's placed in a pot of hot water and kombu seaweed with the sorobushi dashi powder and light shoyu. Next was the chicken. It's put into a sandwich bag, then the shio koji is added in along with a little bit of salt then it's mixed up and put to the side. Next is a namasu type of dish, which is raw vegetables seasoned with vinegar. First, she cut up some radish. Add in some salt, then let it sit. The next vegetable was persimmon, so she cut up one that was on the harder side. She poured some of the rice vinegar into a bowl, added in brown sugar, then dumped in the radish and persimmon and mixed them together. And the daikon looks like it's coming along. Next was negi, or thick green onion or Welsh onion. And then the chicken and negi are fried up. To complete the namasu vegetables, a sprinkle of the hontaka shimi togarashi spice is added on top. She also made some namafu, which are basically slices of wheat gluten, and added them to the side of the daikon. 
On top of the daikon, she used the yuzu miso right out of the bag as is. Finally, she cut up some yuzu zest from the yuzu, which is a Japanese citrus fruit, and placed it on top of the daikon. Last but not least, we drizzled the marunaka shoyu on top of the chicken and enjoyed our meal. Hungry yet?